Good morning and welcome to We're Burning Daylight. What a gorgeous day this is. And always remember, this is the day that the Lord hath made. And so what are we going to do? We're going to rejoice. We're going to raise a hallelujah. And let us begin today by raising our voice and reading God's word together so that we might be full. And when we're full, we can't help but to spill over unto those that we come in contact with throughout the entirety of the day. To God be the glory. We read first in Proverbs chapter 16, and together it says, The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord waiteth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his ways, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is on the lips, is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and a balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to the kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of the kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. The highway of the upright is, the depart, is to depart from evil, and he that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. And he that handleth thy matter wisely shall be found good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he." The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is an wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but in the end thereof are the ways of of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. A forward man soweth strife, and a whisper separateth chief friends. A violent man entices his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise forward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory. It is to be found in the way of righteousness, if it be found in the way of righteousness. And he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth in his spirit, than he, he that ruleth in his spirit, than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Let us just take a leap into the final reading of our, our uh, devotions today. It's in 1 John chapter 5. It says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For what whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. 
This is he that come by, came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but all by the water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. I'm going to read that again. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath witness in himself. And he that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record of God that gave his only Son. And this is the record that God giveth to us eternal life. And this life is his Son. And he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, I said if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And if any man see his brother in sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. And there is a sin unto death. And I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is sin unto death. And know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, and he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen, amen. Let us turn to our reading today. That entitled, Tempted to, Be to Pride. Tempted to Pride. Pride lurks in every human heart, waiting for the most damaging time to emerge. Proverbs warns us that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. And the destruction is not of the proud person alone. Pride destroys the innocent as often as it does the proud. When Jesus was tempted of the devil, Luke wrote that when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Not only did Jesus endure every form of temptation, it seems he had to overcome multiple repetitions of this temptation. The opportune time for the devil is to tempt us is usually the most vulnerable time for his victims. He will tempt us to pride over and over again. And if we succumb to the repeated temptation, we will not only destroy ourselves, but those around us. The goal of the devil in tempting God's children is seldom limited to destruction of one person. He is committed to mass slaughter. The pride of thinking we are good. The pride of thinking we are good. The Son of God has come and has given us understanding. There in 1 John we read, basic Christianity teaches that we are not good and have never been good and never will be good in our own strength. Pride repeatedly whispers otherwise and flatters us insist incessantly. It tells us that we are intrinsically good and we deserve exemptions and we have innate goodness. Pride makes us feel good about ourselves. It makes us self-reliant. Humility makes us feel good about God and it makes us God-dependent. The pride of thinking, we are better. The pride of thinking, we are better. If the devil cannot tempt us into thinking we are good, he circles around us again and in this time concedes, true, you are not good, but at least you are better than those that are you around you. To this attractive delusion, we remind ourselves that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We are not under the authority of the devil, but our minds and wills are fallen and we are depraved. The biblical definition of sin does not allow for better sin. My sin cannot be better than my neighbor's. All sin 
condemns. Any sin condemns. If you are a sinner, and you are, there can be no better than. No better than. The pride of thinking we are immune. The pride of thinking we are immune. One more, once more, the subtle serpent attempts to throw a coil around our spirits. True, he says. You are not good and you are not better than your brother, but at least you are not vulnerable to certain sins. At least you will never do what others have done. This lie can be the most damaging of all. For the reality is, is that we are com uh, capable of committing any sin. The capacity for evil in our hearts knows no bounds. And sure way to slip is to believe the lie that we are incapable of slipping. False confidence leads to moral laxity. Every wall must be shored up and defended. Nothing is as dangerous to us as an undefended strength. I pray that you heard every word that was spoken today, every word that we read, every word that we declared, and that we received with understanding. And may the Holy Spirit guide you and direct you and help you to be a conqueror and not a one to fall into the temptation of pride. We give God all the glory. And I'm thanking you for being with us today. Looking forward to being with you tomorrow. If the Lord wills and share this teaching so that others may know that God loves them and that he is working on each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, that you're still working on us.